me stop. <laughs> My man Chris, you up in here already? That's what's up. Oh, I see you. Have a lovely. Hey, she's an aspiring journalist. I'm just showing some love. We're gonna do a full interview on her channel, and she be cooking, man. She be doing her thing. How you doing, sis? How you doing? How are you? I'm doing great. What's your name? Tell them where you're from and let them know how they can follow you. Okay, so my name is Kaylin. I'm from Trenton. Um, I guess my Instagram is listed in the corner, right? But it's K X A I L Y N. Oh, I'm a. I'm gonna put it right there so we can pin it. K X A I L Y N. Okay. I'm about to pin it to the top. I'm going to put it in the comment. Yeah, I got it. It's pinned to the top, so now everybody can see it. Okay. No matter what's written, they're going to keep seeing it. <clears throat> so first thing I want you guys to do for the first 300 people that's in here, show love. You can get up out of here. Just show love. Follow her real quick and then come right back. Show that love. It costs you nothing. A lot of times people say, what can we do in terms of this movement? Well, big right. part of the movement is motion, but people don't be getting to the motion. Sometimes people feel like they can't do nothing. They're helpless because they don't got the money. Nah, a big part of this is networking and connecting so we can find out what kind of resources we have available to each other, what are our skill sets, what are our specific talents, what are our trades. And then next thing you know, we go barter and we can all empower each other and cut our costs because we both can be of use to each other. So right. go over there. Make sure you follow her. She's aspiring. She is, I don't like saying stuff like that in the future, like it ain't happening now. She's a journalist, all right? And yeah. she's just looking to become more refined, which only time can do. So we're going to do a full-length interview, okay? I got to go to East Coast soon, too. So I give you one direct in person, and, then, okay. and then we'll do one on your live before I get out there on the East. And we're just going to keep cooking. But you got my support, sister. You definitely got my support. I love Thank what you're doing. I love the fact you you listening and you in tune with the information. And the reason why journalists are so very important is because we get to control the narrative. If enough right. of us don't pick up the opportunity to publish our findings, then someone else does it, and then we don't like the representation. Right. So we got to get more of our people in that field. Speaking of which, the books, yes, right now only for the people that's in my course, you go to IamBrotherPolite.at. Only these are the textbooks that's for my course. Only people that's in the course get the books for now. But by the top of next week, I'll release them to the public. You know, I've written over 90 plus books. Some Negroes that just got put on. Uh, have you seen any of his books? People that know I do lectures and do debates, they see tables full of my books. I always release new ones whenever I do my lectures. But that's people for you. Right. However, I got I got these things back. We working, we cooking. This is real estate or legal fiction. This is Head of the Crown, Sovereign Bible. Watch this right here. Come on. This is about economics and politics, but it's written in scriptural form. I need that. I need something like that. So are all your books in your bio? <clears throat> Say it again. Are all your books in your bio? Uh, well, I'm just uh, republishing them and releasing new ones. So right now, the course that I have, the people in the course can purchase from the site that we've given to people that's in the course. But starting Monday, I want to do start Monday midnight. I want to be kind of cliche, but I'm going to figure out what time I'm going to do. But start Monday, it'll be available to the public. And I'm real happy about it because as much as I love to speak, I equally love to write. Right. And so um, there we go. Blood is thicker than water. Now just showing people that they're here because I've been telling people next week, two weeks, Mm -hmm. Last year, I was saying two weeks, but we here. So I'm real happy. That's buy the house on the contract. Just show a few uh, killing with paperwork. So I got templates in here, actual mm -hmm. templates, everything from vaccinations and uh, homeschooling, where you send a letter of <clears throat> intent, letter of intent to the Board of Education to let them know why you don't want your child in the public school system. I got a whole bunch of stuff. Then, of course, the ever popular, I already got these in plastics, Pennies Off of Millionaires, one of my best sellers. Pennies Off of Millionaires and Houses of the New Credit Cards. Got that there. 
That's one of the textbooks for class. Mm -hmm. Got paper terrorism. This is part two to kill them with paperwork. All of these I author, like I said, I author actually 96 books. We just say over 90, right. you know, and we will be over 100 this year for damn sure because I'm back in my bag. Got plenty of time to write in this quarantine. Might right. as well put back in my books. I got status correction. Look at this right here. Defeasance of the statue staple and merchant staple. So for those of you that need help with doing the UCC filings, understanding security agreements that preface the UCC-1 financing statement for the amendments that take place in UCC-3 and for the debt obligations that are referred to in the UCC-9s. If this is another language, it's if it sounds like another language because it is, but those who know, know. And that's that book. This book is for you guys, the ones that's part of that conversation. But enough with that. It's just interesting because the day that I chose to do this, this stuff was starting to manifest. And I'm like so excited because, like I said, my my love, my passion is writing. And that's why I speak so much. I spend right. so much time in, in silence writing. It makes you introspect when you have to write. You know, you stop, you think, you, and then you think about the style in which you write it. And you're like, yo, I just bodied that paragraph. Sometimes I got to, I kill, I lose a lot of time because I be so in awe about one paragraph I wrote. I'd be like, I just bodied that shit. <laughs> and then I got to, I just got to look at it for a while and I meditate on it. And then I go in deep again. So right. I'm just excited. But enough for me. I'm listening to you. I'm here. I'm here for you. Let's build. All right. Awesome. Okay. So I know so just that you are a novelist, you are a writer, you're a mentor. Your favorite yeah. thing is to write. Do you write whatever comes to mind or whatever you're most passionate about? That's a good question. Uh, I like to write. I'm, I'm very weird. I write the way I read. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, most time we don't want to read something the way someone talks. So that's one thing. Right. You want to actually read a book and feel like it isn't book form right so we don't pick up bad habits and read but okay. i write the way i read so i don't have titles until the book tells me what it's about mm -hmm. because the way i read i'll get a book and i'll i'll open it up random and i'll just kind of skim through until i find where i really like something and then i'll just read it from that point to the end Right. And then what will happen is I'll start the book from the beginning and I have a certain level of intention. So what that does for me, it just keeps me more keen and my level of anticipation is higher. So I'm more impelled to just really dig into that book and get in tune. Because if you walk into a movie theater after coming from the concession stand, you get your popcorn, you get your drinks. You wind up being late for the movie about 30, 40 minutes. And when that happens, if should you like the movie, should you walk in on a part where it's like, damn, it's already going down, you tend to say, what happened in the beginning? Right. I wonder what happened in the beginning. And when that happens, you, you make it a point to go to the beginning on your time, or oh, I got to see this movie again. And when you watch it from the beginning, you have an intention there that wouldn't have been there had you read it from the beginning. When you first start a book, you build it up into an anticipation. But if right. you read the book in the middle and you get the climax, you're like, wow, this is so good. I wonder what I miss. And now your intention from the beginning of the book is to connect with what you already read. So for me, it helps me retain the information more and it makes the book more exciting because now I start off with it's exciting and then it's just even exciting to see what I miss so I can see how it bleeds into that part where I picked it up from. Right. So. I write the same way I read. So I don't, I'm, I kind of write in the middle of the book, a little before it, a little after it. Mm -hmm. And then I have to go back because I realize what the book is telling me. <clears throat> you feel what I'm saying? And, yeah. and but what I, what, I, what I won't do though is attempt to start it from the beginning. What I do is I, I write and I complete the book and I say, well, this should be it, but I know it's incomplete. And then when I go back, I don't attempt to start it, the conversation from the beginning. I will continue from a previous book that I wrote. And then I challenge myself to see how it can bleed in to the beginning 
of the book that I wrote, which was really in the middle of the book. So I start a book with the intention to be in the middle of it. Writing like that helps me because I get to the point and I start doing the things that I would like to see in the book from the very beginning. And then I realized, damn, this kind of, this story kind of started under the presumption that people already knew what was already going on. Mm-hmm. Let, let me find a way to fill that up. But the way I fill it up, I'll, I'll then I'll think of another book that I wrote and I'll pick up conversation from the end of that other book. And then I find a way to make that information bleed into where I started the book. So it's chaos, but it makes for a different style of writing because what I'm looking to do is as an artist, you want that authenticity, you want that uniqueness, right? So if I was making beats and I'm constantly listening to Neptune's music, I'm a fan of Neptune's, eventually in my songs and my music, you'll hear you'll hear that Neptune sound. It's in full. Just like if I move from New York and now I live in LA, people that hang around me consistently may adopt saying words like, yo, son, or you know my body. Like, this is how we talk in, in, in the East, right? Mm-hmm. So you start speaking like your company. And likewise, if I'm around people long enough, even if I'm not a copycat, I'm going to probably pick up some of the things that they say, right. right? And that just happens naturally. So with my writing, I don't like being exposed to nobody's information so I can find out what I'm really about. You know, I don't, I don't, at that point, everything's closed. <laughs> the time for reading everybody's information and listening to everybody is a dub. When I go into writing mode, I would like to really know what I think uninfluenced as much as possible. Right. And that's what creates, an, that's what gives me an authentic approach towards my writing. So okay, when someone reads my book, I want them to be like, this is different. Or this is how he was feeling. Okay. And you know what? I haven't read nothing with that approach. And then I use a different type of visual rhetoric so I don't follow the conventional rules based on when I capitalize and I it don't look like no goofy child stuff, of course, but mm-hmm. the way I did for me, it's the words <clears throat> that compose the the words that the sentence is composed of. When you close out a paragraph, and sometimes I need two space between two paragraphs or one space. And sometimes I need double space the words, sometimes single space. It's it's because it's an art and it's visual rhetoric and some things stand out more when you put it a certain way. You know, it's just like I spell I am brother polite. I spell I am. I spell it with a lowercase I because the big I looks like an L and it causes confusion when it's next to the big A. But if you put a lowercase I and then a capital A for M and then capital B, everything else lowercase for brother, but all caps for polite, you can clearly see everything even though it's connected to each other. So that visual rhetoric is just as important to drive your point home as the words that you use. So I'm thinking about all these things that people probably wouldn't consider. Even in, even in my books, the the artwork has symbolism in there that I sit down and I'm like, look, it needs to have DNA right there, but I want it subtle. I want a person who gets that deep to look at my covers and be like, yo, I just realized that right there. <clears throat> you feel what I'm saying? So right. I'm just into that. And then every book I have has two titles. So I got the main title, then I got the subtitle, you know, because I got the thing that I want you to see, which is surface meaning. And then I got the other thing where it's like, yo, if you want to get deep, this is where it's at. So, I, so one title is esoteric and the other title is exoteric. So I might got here like blood is sticking in water. People lie, but DNA doesn't. But then at the bottom, I got Ag Nation and the American Terra Firma. I might have pennies off for millionaires, but at the subtitle saying houses are the new credit cards. I might have buy the house, sign the contract, protect the asset, but at the subtitle put no mortgage, no protest, no jurisdiction. Right. So it's, it's the people. I got the surface meaning and what we're looking to get accomplished. And then I got the thing that I really want to talk about, but I don't want the book to start off with like, yo, this shit is just over my head. So I, I write for both people, esoteric and exoteric. I'm going to find metaphysics inside of the politics and the economics. And in the economics and the spirituality, I'm going to find the money. I want to always be able to talk to two people at the same time. Right. So are your books two teas or they're kind of like whatever you think and your insight just trying for other people to understand your thoughts? But that's I guess that's right, the, the goal of a teacher. Man. Yeah, the goal. I take being a teacher very serious, so 
I I would have it would be a great letdown if the only person if the only thing a person could say after they read my book is yo that shit was that shit is deep oh what did you read that shit is just deep you know what I'm saying I gotta go back so my my goal is how do I find a way to get you to come out with some kind of sentiment or some kind of ability to articulate what you just experienced in your own words. Mm-hmm. I gotta, in order for me to do that, I got to find a way to make connections with things that make so much sense to you that you would be able to recite it. So I'm vicariously teaching through you. So we go watch two people fight <clears throat> on the streets and you can see the girl smack the guy and the guy was like, bitch, I don't give a fuck if you're a female. He punches her. Dude comes by. Yo, you can't do that. Oh, the fuck I can't. Bus driver comes out, stops the car. Everybody's like, yo, stops the bus. Yo, you keep driving. I see that they're fighting, but yo, I got somewhere to go. Shut up. We remember all of that, just like that. Mm-hmm. But then we'll read a book and be like, I don't remember what the hell I just read. In fact, I was reading for three, five pages. I don't even remember what I read in those three, five pages. Something happened. I just dozed off. So for me, I gotta. I always think, how can I tell a story? <clears throat> because... When it's like that fight that happens outside, we remember how everything happened in all the sequence of events. So if I'm going to tell you about the prison incarceration system and how the Corrections Corporation of America behaves as a surety, where they ensure or they back the the prison work in the form of redeeming flawed mortgage endeavors. So in other words, when people get locked up, they pay a uh, bid bond, performance bond. Uh, they sign a bid bond, payment bond, performance bond, and those three get consolidated to form a mortgage-backed security. And what that means is that the people in prison that's paying their debt to society, the work that they do in prison at free labor is leveraged into paying people's flawed mortgage endeavors. Mm-hmm. So I would say that and break it down, you know, Bid bond, payment bond, performance bond gets uh bid bond, payment bond, and performance bond gets consolidated into a mortgage backed security, and the Corrections Corporation of America acts as the surety behind each prisoner, and they leverage the debt to society in the form of free labor in prison into the mortgages that have been flawed or gone into default. And in turn, we see a direct correlation between foreclosures and prison incarceration. The more mm-hmm. foreclosures there are, the more prison incarceration is, because privatized prisons have a quota to keep at least nine out of 10 cells open. <clears throat> I mean, uh, filled, nine out of 10 cells have to be filled. So we look at it that way and we go, okay, damn. Then I have to say, you know what? It's about money. You know, they haven't passed laws since March 9th, 1933, House Joint Resolution. They pass bills, bills of exchange, so statutes become codes. <clears throat> Makes all sense with the, with the privatized prisons. But how do we take all of that and then we tell a story? So somewhere in there, I'm going to cook up and I'm going to say, you know what? It's all about draining our energy and this is all about money. So it's a dichotomy to the words. So I might tell you that you can be arrested and they throw you, I can say, melanin, full spectrum light, solidified, constitutes a melanocyte. And you go, okay, tell me more. So full spectrum light constitutes a melanocyte, gives us our pigmentation. <clears throat> and when light is trapped inside of uh, a certain shape, it's called the prism. And we're light bodies, so the darker we are, the lighter we are. And they want to throw us inside of the box or in the, in behind the walls, we say, or in prison. So right. they take our light body, put us in the prison, which is kind of like putting us in a prism because we're light made manifested. And then, so it's all about draining our energy. So they throw us in a cell, like a Duracell, like a battery. And you might even be locked up for assault and battery. And, but they're trying to drain our energy. So that's why they charge you for crimes. But the charge is economical, it's commerce. So, and then that's why they give you plea bargains or they want you to bargain like you at the store. So, by the time I do all of that, for some reason, you remember the stuff that I say about the 
Corrections Corporation of America, the bid bond, payment bond, performance bond, exactly. the mortgage bond security, it'll come together. Because somehow I throw all that in there, I get it. Or I might show you, <coughs> I might have to tell you about mortgage hypothecation. But first, I, I want you to get the agenda. Now, I can go over it, and I can talk about the presumption of the item sonance. I can talk about the writ, certiorari. I can talk about the or a number of other things, right? However, I can I can also say, you know what? Mortgage means death, pledge, or a pledge or agreement to die. Most people are not going to buy a house until they're about mm, 35 years old. They get a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. They become 65. Granted, if they're able to pay a debt until they're 65, lifetime expectancy about 72 years old. So by the time they fulfill that debt obligation, they'll be on their way out. And chances are they'll probably have to refinance and do all sorts of stuff. So that 30 year okay. fixed mortgage kind of gets prolonged. So by the time you do pay for the mortgage, but presumably you won't be able to, not only the house goes in probate, but the fact is you got into an agreement to be in debt until you die. By the time you get your house, by the time you get your house here, probably around 35 something and you did 30 year fixed rate mortgage. So we see mortgage, it's a pledge or agreement until you die. Pledge is an agreement more as in mortuary's death. Makes sense. Then we have to talk about mortgage hypothecation. But many of us don't know what hypothecation is. Right. So before I get into what hypothecation is, I go into the etymology, and it means to dig a hole or to put someone in. So the mortgage to put you in debt, it puts you in a hole. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? <clears throat> and so now makes sense because we get a mortgage which is a pledge or agreement to die. So we're talking about death. And when someone dies, they get put into the hole. So the mortgage gets hypothecated, right? And then what I'm going to do is say, then they foreclose on you. Foreclose etymologically means to get rid of a spirit or to cast a spirit away. So what's up with all the death talk? Is this made up? No. Is this a mere coincidence? Can't be. So now we have the mortgage hypothecation which is the death that prepares you to be buried. And then guess what? You put that dirt over, the spirit is gone. You, mm -hmm. you put all those years into your house. You got your basketball trophies. You got your pictures of your family and milestones in your child's life. And then one day someone takes your property and literally kills your spirit because mm -hmm. you've been paying this debt for so many years. You, when you buy a house, you just think you're going to be there for the rest of your life. And so it kills your spirit. So in many ways, this gets you enthused or in, it makes you say, you know what? I'm enticed to read whatever's coming with this because the effort put into understanding the crisis that would be created is enough to give you the impetus to want to keep reading because it's just a unique way to consider what they're doing to you. Right. So you might have relationships. <clears throat> and then you say there's a dichotomy to relationships. So it being a dichotomy relationship, oh, dichotomy to the words that constitute the things that we say we go into relationships for. Mm -hmm. So you might have me and Boo get together and we see a house and we say, you know what? I think we both should invest in that house. I think we both can make some money if we partner up. So you know what, Boo, let's go get this house together. So we say, okay, let's get that. We create a contract because we both agree that we can make money together off of this house that's called consideration. And then that house starts making us money. We call that appreciation. The house is appreciated. So now we got consideration and appreciation. We say, you know what? We need to get a trust. The trust is property held on behalf of one so that another may benefit. Let's get this trust so we can make sure that our children inherit wealth. That's called wealth stewardship, generational wealth. So to employ this wealth stewardship, we get a trust, which is property held on behalf of one so that another <clears throat> may benefit. So we do that. So now we got appreciation, consideration, and trust. In that trust, we establish what percentage this property goes to who under what circumstances, what percentage of the revenue. So now we have a bond, which is debt obligation. So bonding is taking place. And then we may even break this thing up in terms of shares, right? Mm -hmm. So we have bonding, sharing, appreciation, consideration, and trust. And because we have that, we need a paper that attests to this ownership and equity. 
So this is a security. A security is a paper certificate that tests the ownership and equity as in the case of a stock or ownership or bond as in the case of a debt obligation which has tradable derivatives. So we get a security there. Therefore, it's going to have a QCIP, a Committee on Uniform Securities Identification Procedure. So we're going to have that there. So now what's going to happen is we sit here and we go, yo, we got bonding, we got sharing, we got security, we got trust, we got appreciation, we got consideration, and a friend is one who's willing to invest in you and one you're willing to invest in. And the cooperation is the cooperation. So we say love is law, family is business. So we understand, I just taught economics, but everything in there is going to give you the emotional context, indirectly or vicariously. It's going to happen. You know why? The security is going to give you security and the trust is going to give you trust and the appreciation is going to give you appreciation and consideration is going to give you much to consider. It's just a fact. When we go back over everything that I said, each one of those precipitates the other one. If we initiate the economic aspect first, you're going to get the emotional context next. So that's why there's a dichotomy amongst those words. <clears throat> you want trust? You'll get a trust when you establish a trust. It's going to happen. You want appreciation? You're going to appreciate your wife or your lover. You, you're you going to appreciate your man. If you turn around, you both making bread and you're not an economic slave in the relationship. And in the event that you should break up, you already know what you already have. So even in the case of my wives, when brothers ask me to share information about it, I say, well, polygyny doesn't start until the women know they can leave and they're not economically trapped in your paradigm. So you might be with them for three, four years. Doesn't mean you're polygynous. Because in order to be polygynous, you have to be a master of monogamy. So some people be like, yo, hold on. You got all them wives? Well, I don't want to deal with that. I deal. When I say, yo, bro, I know you want to do this, but you probably don't really want to do this. Because you think... The solution to not being with your one wife is to get many others because it's not working. <laughs> but in actuality, the paradox is if I got four wives, I have to have four monogamous relationships. You have to be good at monogamy. So in other words, you have no business multiplying if you don't know how to add. <laughs> you, you walk with me? So yeah. that's the issue there. So... These things are put into place so that chaos isn't there. So people say, yo, so you can't have a relationship with a woman unless it's about money? <clears throat> Never said that. I'm saying in this particular instance, if you're going to have this type of relationship, the thing that creates the cohesiveness is the economics. It helps greatly. It's like, oh, well, well, freak that. I can't make no money unless I'm in this relationship. No. This is for people who don't mind being in this type of relationship. And in this type of relationship, if you're going to be in it, make sure the economics is right. It works better. In fact, most relationships work better when the economics is right. right. But to my point, it's not effective polygyny or it doesn't even start until the women there can leave at any instant and still have their own house, their own cars, their own money. Their own investments, whole portfolio. Why? Because for me as a man, I also get a peace of mind. Oh, you, they definitely here because they rock with me because they can all bounce. You, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. That creates better synergy because I don't really have a peace of mind until I know this beautiful woman who's making more money than most beautiful women who has more security than the most beautiful woman. Who knows? She owns 60%. One wife owns over 60% of my publishing. So every time I book sell, 60%, I get 40%. And then my 40%, I got to use it to make sure we get more paper, more ink, more glue, and something breaks out. And then I keep my percentage. To the other wife, whatever we're doing in real estate, she get 55%. So, and that's no matter what. I die, I'm alive, and together we're apart. Mm -hmm. So when you create those opportunities, it fortifies the conviction that people have and as far as the fact that they say, I'm happy here and I choose to stay. Because one thing that's not going to be the reason why someone stays with me is because 
I ain't got no money, so I just kind of got to pee here. Like most of these women. They kind of, yeah, because, you know, shit is just tricky. I wait for the other question. I, you ain't going to have a problem with me. This ain't even fair. You got to interview somebody that, know how to, that don't have to be an interviewee. Because you only got to ask me one thing. I'll be no, here I'm one question. <laughs> I'm learning a lot. <laughs> but I will take one me. question and, and be here for two hours if you let me. <laughs> I ain't going to hiccup either. You can cut me anytime you need to. All right. Um, so in one interview, you touched on coronavirus being one of the best things that's happened to us right now. True so story. do you say that because we're able to just take a break from everything and analyze everything that's going on or the idea that we have an opportunity to learn more, to learn more about ourselves, like just <clears throat> I say this. virus the time? It's a very good question. <clears throat> There's two ways to approach this. First way that isn't often spoke about that we should speak about more often is the healing for the planet Earth. I believe post-coronavirus, we should all agree to quarantine at least once a year. Right. Yeah, all week. <clears throat> and the reason why is because the animals are coming back that you never knew would be here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The trees look a lot more healthier. The sky looks a lot more blue. The grass only was this green in white communities. Now it's green in the hood. You know, the, the hood never had green grass like this. The shit is always greener in the white community. So, I mean, I live in Beverly Hills. That's some green grass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That grass is green. I haven't seen grass like that my whole life in Brownsville. So, it's just a beautiful thing. People are not around to throw their non-biodegradable products in the ocean. Right. They're not around smoking at them damn cigarettes and everything. They're not throwing little plastics all over and garbage all over the place and the fish is getting tangled up in it. And so planet Earth gets to breathe. So I love that part about this whole situation. And to the economic aspect, I really love this opportunity because, you again, it's narrative. So there you go, journalists, right? Someone writes an article, someone goes on TV and says, the economy is doing bad. It's on decline. It's, this crash is the worst thing to happen in a long time since 1929. Now I go, oh, hold on. Oh, whoa, 1929. Excuse me. Hold on. 1929, during that era in American history, that era birthed more millionaires than any other era ever that we have documented or recorded. More millionaires were birthed during the 20s, post-World War I, Great Depression, when the economy was flatlined, more people became millionaires out of that than right. any other time in history. So what I do, I say, you know what? Let me line things up. Let me see if the circumstances that surround the people during the 1920s are consistent with the time that we live in it now because it just so happens about a month and change ago, the economy literally looked identical or the market looked identical to that of the market in the 1920s. So if that be the case, I'm like, well, this must be a hell of a time to become a millionaire, but let me put it to task. Right. What did they do to become millionaires? <clears throat> they invested in bankruptcies. They invested in bankrupt companies that still had public offerings, meaning that you still can buy their stocks post-bankruptcy. <clears throat> As they reorganized, Accepted loans, perhaps from the government bailout or for another company putting money in. And so you say, well, that's risky. <clears throat> it depends if you, if you understand the company. It doesn't get to the $100 market, but it only gets to $40. That's one times 40 or two times 40, whatever that stock is. So I get $2 and I say, I'm going to buy <clears throat> 100 of these things. So I spend $2 a hundred times, <laughs> right? So I go, okay, I'm going to buy a hundred times two, 200, right? So I own a hundred shares. And then now those hundred shares are all $40 each. I don't mind. You give me something that's costing uh, 20 cents. That used to be 
twenty dollars, <throat> and it's twenty cents and might not work, it's worth putting two hundred dollars in there at around nineteen twenty cents. So I could get a thousand shares. It's nineteen mm -hmm. cents about twenty cents is gonna give me about five hundred shares in a round. So I throw two hundred dollars there and be like, yo, fuck it, I own a thousand shares. <clears throat> and then that stock's worth a thousand dollars. This is like crypto now. We go to crypto. It is plausible. This is not make believe shit. So I buy something at a fractional amount. It's just coming up or it already went down, whatever. And it's 19 cents. These numbers exist right now because of this economy. Right. And I say I put $200 in there so I can own 1,000 shares. And then the share price goes up to 1,000 in two, three years. I made a million dollars. I took a $200 risk <laughs> to possibly make a million dollars. So guess what Brother Plyde is doing? I'm taking a bunch of $200 risk down the line. I'm taking a bunch of them. You know why? <clears throat> because I don't even give a damn if I spend $3,000 down the line. As long as you get back and then some. As That's long. It. Because all I got to do is be right once. And most likely, I'll probably be right six times. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Yeah. So you don't get opportunities like this because when we're talking about the narrative, we got to think about when the media comes on and tells you that the stock market is bad, it's not, you can't trust it, it's too volatile, and then guess what? Poor people be like, yo, it's scary. I was going to think about it, but fuck it, I ain't going to think about it. Nigga, you never thought about it ever, and then one time you thought about it, that's because that was the idea you should have kept. But you turned your head because you watched the news and they told you it's horrible. But the mm -hmm. question we must ask is who is it horrible for? <clears throat> well... If I had the luxury of buying Apple stocks at four five hundred dollars a share, and I'm loading up and I own ten thousand shares, and then Apple is now two hundred and change, this is bad for me. This has never been bad for anybody else because they didn't have the five hundred dollar luxury to buy something ten thousand times by five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. If something, if American Airlines and all these other joints goes down to $9.20 and it's normally over $50, $60 a share. That's bad for the people who have $50 times X amount of shares. This is amazing that we can spend our little old $9 and buy something X amount of times. Mm -hmm. So who's it bad for? It's not bad for us. It's bad for somebody else. So stocks that were uh, $80, we can find them. As this thing get worse, for probably two dollars, and if it's just a shadow of itself, it'll only be like twenty five dollars, thirty dollars, two years to come. And we get dividends; we get paid quarterly. When they put out that declaration and tell you when they're going to pay you every three months, like Coca Cola pays you forty one cents. Warren Buffett owns four hundred million shares of Coca Cola, and so. The declaration this year is that they're paying 41 cents four times a year. So he's going to make $164 million every three months just because a dividend is when the company pays you for investing in them. Mm -hmm. So imagine if we were young and we knew this information and we just said, you know what, whenever I got a little extra change, I'm going to put a little money in, as an example, Coca-Cola. I'm going to just keep building this up. Because instead of going in the bank, the bank is going to pay you like that. They're going to give you 41 cents every three months. Your money goes in and it comes out the same way unless Netflix is taking their money for their bill or some shit. So <clears throat> your money don't go and become bigger. But what if you knew? Let me just put my shit in stocks. But that's risky because look what just happened. Well, first of all, there's a every seven to 10 year interval where we have to go into a recession. It's like a purge for the economy. It's the same thing I was talking about with planet Earth. It happens. That's one. However, if you understand the company and you understand who invested behind the company and you understand the behavior, like Warren Buffett never sold a share of Coca-Cola a day in his life. So he has 400 million. He didn't buy 400 million at the beginning. If a billionaire has been buying stocks since the 70s and never sold any of them, never relinquished it since the 70s to 2020, and since the 70s to 2020, every seven to 10 years about we have recessions and the economy goes to hell. I look at the dividend history and I see, damn, even in recessions and crashes, 
these motherfuckers are still paying 35 cents a share. I'm like, yo, they've never stopped paying dividends ever. I just want to look at the last 10 years because if you look at the last 10 years, there had to be a recession somewhere and then we see the behavior during recessionary periods. So when I look at all of that, I say to myself, you know what? It's a roll of the dice, but I can't just be sitting here putting the money in the bank getting nothing. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> can't do it. Can't do it. You feel me? And I, I, I stash my share of cash somewhere. I do that. You feel what I'm saying? But I gotta, I gotta put it where I know. After years, every year, every every year, I just dump some money in, dump some money in, dump some money in, and I keep building. Now I got a thousand shares. Now I got two thousand shares. Now I got three thousand shares. You keep building it up, building it up, building it up. But then what happens is you find yourself. You know, we ain't gonna have the hundred sixty-four million every month if we're not the billionaire. But all I do, I just cut zeros to see what it would be like when I get it, right? Mm -hmm. So when I get it, you know. Is sixteen thousand four hundred dollars. I'll take that four times a year. If I do nothing for the rest of my life, I'm gonna get on an average. You know, they might give you thirty five cents, but they've been up on forty and forty one cents. It's amazing during this era they're doing it because the declaration is when they tell you if they're going to pay dividends yet again, and then the X date is the latest date. One day before the X date is the latest time that you could put your money in to get paid the dividends. So you get one day to realize, oh, if you want to invest right now and get the dividend that's coming the day after, you can put your money in right there. And then they give you the payout date, which is normally a few days from the time of the X date, which is some months in front of the time that they make the declaration that they will be paying your dividends. And so <clears throat> to build up this type of momentum, this is the greatest hour because everything is dirt cheap. You can learn this information when the economy is doing great and it will do you no good. You can now play Monopoly and like, yo, you know, let me get a hundred of those things. So when three months go by, you get my 80 cents. Because some people is giving out 80 cents on a share. And then you got to look at what the share is and look at its PE ratio. Some of the technical things. That's what I teach in my, my course. But at the end of the day, like, let me, let me show you something. I cashed out today because I've been killing them. I've been day trading. <clears throat> And I'll be swing trading. So what happens is I I only focus on, like, stocks that are volatile. Everything that's bad is good if you change your strategy mm -hmm. for the most part. So what happens is people don't like stocks that just be up and down, up and down, up and down. People don't like that. They don't like that volatility. <clears throat> but volatility plus volatility it's fucking actuality when it comes to making money. So <clears throat> the economy is volatile. Things are going up and down, going up and down, going up and down. So what you want to do when you want to make money quick and not long term, the dividends is long term. When you want to make money in shorter intervals very fast, what you do is you say, <clears> hmm, <throat> I want to find the most erratic or volatile stock in this most erratic and volatile time. Because two volatilities equal what? The ability to find a crevice of space between 10 and 50 cents over and over throughout the day. Mm -hmm. You see it more now than ever before. So what this means is if I have $10,000, I could take $10,000, <clears> buy a stock that's around a dollar, and when it goes up 20 cents, that $10,000 makes me Two thousand dollars, twenty cents, and then when it goes down, but I know it's volatile, so I know okay, it could go down ten, but it's likely to go up thirty. I could still buy it when it goes down ten, even though I bought it when it went up twenty, because it's so volatile. I have a ten cents to fifty cents crevice of space, three, four, or maybe even five times in a day. So what that means is that twenty cents come up. I throw ten grand in there. I make two thousand. I wait. It goes down. I put the ten grand back in there. It goes up two thousand dollars again because it went up twenty cents. I wait. I get a little scary. It goes down. That shit is on ten cents. It keep looking like it keep going down, it's going up, and it hits eight cents. Go down. Goes up. It, it only did seven cents. Goes down. Fuck it. I'm gonna take ten cents. I make a thousand dollars from the same ten thousand dollars. 
because I only I only got ten cents come ups. Because now the stock is only ten cents higher. <clears throat> I do that. So after fishing, we say it look like fishing today. <laughs> It looks like fishing today. Because I leave everything in there. <clears throat> the principle I leave. But this is real facts. I should have brought the, uh, I got the money count right over there, but I ain't going to do all of that. But this is me fishing today, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. You know, I teach this in my class. I, I apologize for the for the 50s because I wasn't prepared <laughs> for this. But <clears throat> this is this is some of today's earnings. I just pulled it out. You know, people could slow it down and, and, and do a rough estimate of what I got going on there. But this is some of today's earnings. And I'm, I'm not playing double tricks. This is some more uh, earnings for today. Mm -hmm. But you see, it's not like the the rappers that I'm going a, I'm to a call your mama bitch and I'm going to sell you some drugs periodically. <clears throat> this is me. Like, yo, I'll tell you how to do it. <clears throat> it's rather easy. And there's more. I can I can do this. Uh I can do this quite a bit. Um, let me see. 10, 10, 10, 10. I could do this about I don't want to scare people. Let's let's just say we could do this. We could we it could amount to over a hundred thousand. Let's say that. But <clears throat> as much as I may keep cash on me, you must know if what I'm saying is true, there'd be no way I wouldn't be leaving. I'm i I'm being nice and saying ten thousand does that. 10,000 does that. But you must know, when a nigga found out $10,000 can make me over $50,000 a week, mm -hmm. you must know at some point, a nigga starts looking at that 10,000 and be like, let me put 50,000 there and see what I might make. Right. And how many times can I do it? If 10 cents can make you come up or 20 cents can come up, I'm not greedy. <clears throat> Give me my 10 cents come up. Give me my 20 cents come up. And let me just do this. I'm like, this shit feel like robbery. I'm like, this is legal. I, they call this shit day trading and swing trading. Why you ain't put me on this whole time? I'm. No one has to be a genius to sit there and master the art of going in and out of 10 to 20 cents, especially now. So I tell people, you got to be semi-slow if someone gives you the opportunity. Yo, I'm 10 at <laughs> You got to be somebody slow if someone is, I, I teach a $99 class, one of these, and, and I show people, yo, just take one of these and put it in there, and I'll make sure before, before three days is out, you will do it yourself and get your, your $100 back, and then build it up so you can throw a better worm and a better hook out there so you can reel it in. And then I start showing you how to buy the behind the back passes. People are like, yo, but you can lose your money out there. The it's, it's just going to go down. So since you know that, right, you do know you can make money rolling your dice on the money going down. It's called the put option. You do know <clears throat> that if a stock <clears throat> is $10 and you really feeling froggy, meaning you're ready to jump on this because, yo, you can't trust the market. Shit's going to go down. Mm -hmm. If you really feel like that, there's a place in the stock market for you because that's called a put option. That's when you can own the future based on you saying this is going to go down. So if I think a $10 stock is going to, <clears throat> if I think a $10 stock is going to go down to about $7, then I can buy a put option under that belief. And then what's going to happen is <clears throat> the strike price is $7. If I believe, <clears throat> pardon me, if I believe the stock is going to go down to about, I give you a prime example, actually. I just did this shit. <clears throat> I give you a prime example. Warren Buffett uh, sold all his positions in airlines. So what that means that he sold everything in the airline sector out of his portfolio. He sold all of it. So he moved his position. He got all that shit out. Because that man is considered a guru when it comes to the stock market, I knew 
it was going to be held two times. Why? Because we're just coming off what was called the dead cat bounce. So this is a dead cat bounce is when you see things looking very good and you know it's just not true. <clears throat> Give an example. Nobody could fly on planes like that. That's that's just not going to be happening. <clears throat> shit, I just got some orders for overseas and found out I can't even mail my shit overseas because that's illegal. I'm like, fuck. They just put out the overseas people. So I, I just found this out. I'm like, what? So now we got to reconcile those orders for the people that bought books from overseas. You know, so I got, I'm got i still, I'm like, yo, ebook it is. We're going to figure out how to get it to you. But anyway, that's another uh -huh. conversation. So <clears throat> what happens is no one can go into hotels, right? Because they don't want to encourage tourism and travel. So hotels is a done. And no one can go on no cruise lines because... That's just people going to get sick in the ocean and shit. So there's no cruise ships going to the Caribbean. There's no back and forth flying like that. You get a flight from L.A. to Philly for like 50 bucks. And nobody's going to hotels. So what happens is one day you wake up and you go, why are the stocks for hotels? It's still low, but it's very high. Mm -hmm. So it's saying this. Why do I wake up one day and see that the stock prices for flights, the stock prices for hotels, and the stock prices for cruise lines are all up? Why are they all up? We're going to take advantage of it now. We're going to sell our shares and do whatever. It, it depends on the high that you got. Now, some people buy them thinking, hey, Things is working in our favor. But the reality is, this is an illusion. Because if you just walked outside, you'll realize, yo, everybody's still in quarantine. So why the hell are hotels stock prices up? Why are airline stock prices up? Why are cruise line stock prices up? So you know what? When you use your common sense, you know, no matter how good everything looks, oh, yeah, the economy is looking good. Everything is starting to grow. People are starting to buy again. People are investing again. You're supposed to be, know what to do with that. You're supposed to be like this. Uh, it's going to drop. And so that's called the dead cat bounce. That's when you get these little spikes during a recession where things look like it's promising. But if you understand mm -hmm. and about your condition, you know if it's an illusion or not. So there's going to be dead cat bounces. It's a time where the psychology of the people as a collective, for whatever reason, believe in the market for whatever reason, and shit goes up, and then people start believing, okay, this is good again, and then it drops. So now what you got to do, you got to know the highs and the low and the lows of the low. <clears throat> Meaning, because this market is a low market, a bear market. Bears attack downward, and then... Bulls attack upward with their horns. So there's a bull market is when everything's going good in the economy, and a bear market is when everything's going down. So in a down market, a bear market, you have to know what is the new high and what is the new low. Because the high in a high market is different from the high in a low market. You understand what I'm saying? So if something is generally $100 and it becomes $120, it's high in a high market. But if something is normally $100, and right now, that shit is at $10. $15 is high in the low market. So once you know what high is in the low market and what low is, so it's just like if I stand on top of a car and I drop a basketball that has air in it, it's going to bounce, and the second bounce won't be, as, won't be equal to the first bounce, and the third one won't be equal to the second. And if I go on top of a roof of a house and I drop a basketball, it's going to bounce, and the second bounce ain't going to be as high as the first, and the third ain't going to be as high as the second. But from two different heights, something similar will happen, and that is the ball will continue to bounce, but each time it bounces, it's going to steadily lose momentum. That's how a dead cat bounces. Only thing is, you got to understand, when you're in a high market, like on a roof, when you're in a bull market, when that ball bounces, you have to understand what's the height of the next bounce anticipated. And then when you're on a car dropping the ball, that's the bear market, and you know there's going to be a spike, and it's not equal to when you drop it off the roof, but the behavior is what? Similar. 
So in mathematics, I got a triangle this big and I got a triangle this big. They're similar because they have the same angles, but they're not the same size. So they're not congruent. <clears throat> so it's the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Similar, but not equal. <clears throat> so in a dead cat bounce, we just came off of a dead cat bounce. We just came off a spike. And I'm like, yo, hold on. Things were looking up on the weekend for the airline sectors. And I told all the students, like, yo, this is a money grab. If you bought those, sell them, make your bread, because it's, it's going to drop. Don't believe in this shit. And it's the weekend. It's scary on the weekend. Because anything happens by Monday, you, you go, fuck. So I'm like, things are too high. People are like, no, nah, we should hold on. It's high. It's going to go higher. I'm like, that's a dead cat bounce. Y'all know better than that. There's no fucking hotels open. So why are hotel prices high now? There's right. no airlines moving around. Why is, why is it high? There's no cruise lines. No one's on ships. So if I see this bitch go up $15, and I got to check the paper. Is niggas going on cruise again? There ain't no cruises. So I don't trust it. <clears throat> what I do, I sell to make my bread. That's not the day trade, and that's more like the swing trade. That's when you're making dollars at a time. I do the day trade to make my pennies because pennies are for millionaires, right? So, one, I anticipate a bounce because I know it's a dead cat bounce, and it has to come down because we're not in a good economy, and it's not going to get good anytime soon. Then Warren Buffett on the weekend <clears throat> says, yo, fuck this. He don't do shit like this. Everything must go. When he does that, guess what? I mean, I know much about stocks, but if a nigga don't be doing shit like this, who knows a lot about stocks, I'm going to just follow suit. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so when that happens, I'm like, yo, Monday going to be Armageddon for airlines. And so someone like Warren Buffett may do that as a chess move to initiate or encourage bankruptcy by getting stockholders to sell, and then he come back and buy it when it's cheaper. You feel what I'm saying? That's what they be doing out here. They play that game. So I knew Monday between the dead cat bounce and it had to come down, and then a highly revered stockholder. You know, we talking about Berkshire Hathaway. We talking about a, a conglomerate holdings company that's known all over the world saying everything we ever had in airlines is gone. Fuck that. We don't believe in it. They accumulated too much debt. They came into um, they came into 2020 with too much debt, and they just accumulated more. The stimulus package won't accommodate properly for them. It's just too much. They got their hands out. But I know it's a, it's a game. So when Monday came, that shit went down to $9.15 and all of that, one of the stocks that I was interested in. I went in there, and I bought, like, no tomorrow because I knew it had passed over. And that price was dirt low from scare, from scare tactics and fear. <laughs> and then that shit went up, ten dollars and eighty cents. So I made I almost I almost touched two dollars on every share. And I'm talking take your child savings. I'm talking go to the loan shark who will cut your fingers off if you don't pay him back in forty eight hours. I'm talking I threw everything there because I just knew what it was. I was just smiling to myself. Right. I mean, I get my bread one way or another, damn it. I knew what it was. <laughs> Boom! That shit hit ten eighty. Cashed out, like yo, um, <clears throat> call Fidelity. I need, I need you guys to wire that over here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and now let me pull some money out because I like to have it in my hands sometimes. Just, to, just the, I, I come from poverty. Some people be like, yo, sometimes you, I drive my Rolls Royce, everything. People, you act like you never had nothing. Absolutely, that's not even an act. I actually had nothing. You catching on real quick. This is exactly how I'm gonna behave. I'm behaving like a nigga never had nothing because I never did. You know what I'm saying? Right. So sometimes I want to do my thing. <clears throat> now, you know what's not fair? If I took a picture in front of a Toyota Corolla, a nigga wouldn't say shit. He'd be content. But if I take a picture or videotape me driving a Rolls Royce, yo, why are you doing that to your people? What the fuck is this? So I'm wearing the white man's Versace, which you can wear the white man's Payless. Because made by same Europeans, but because yours is cheaper, you're technically pro-black and not wearing white people's clothes. Because mine's is more expensive. My shit is white people's clothes. But you see, I could I could be wearing my brother's shirt <clears throat> because I pay my gym membership for my whole family, which which is thousands of dollars for the year. No one would say. He patronizes black business because he's not patronizing black business. It's the black man whose business I patronize is actually successful. 
There's no love for patronizing successful black businesses as a successful black man. And when you say, how come I don't see people that's successful around you? I say, oh. When you say, how come I don't see people that's successful around you? I say, oh, now I get it. My children, my wives, and my friends don't count as black people, right? That's successful. Right. It gotta be you that you actually told me. Why don't you just cut to the chase and say, nigga, give me some bread. Stop fronting because everyone in my cipher is eating. It's a fact. I can, I can, I can call all my personal assistants, my secretaries. I can go in and go ham and video oh, on this phone. I would have to call them on a different phone. I gotta figure that out. I'm gonna do that one day and just call a whole bunch of people on my staff, my security, my arm security, my my personal secretary, my personal assistants, all of them. You're like, are you doing pretty good? Are you struggling during this coronavirus? No. <clears throat> because we make smart investments and we play on our phone all day until four o'clock and then we make our money like that and we gone. So to your question, like I said, I would go off. You you feel what I'm saying? Uh the reality is <clears throat> the reality is if if you be a uh, kind of brain dead if you played games and you didn't take the time out to just study during a time where you, you're not boggled down by distractions and going to clubs and all that other stuff, it'd, it'd be kind of foolish not to be here making sure you research, you double check the information, vet the information, and, and jump into the game. Because one thing I definitely can tell you, if you study the 20s, 1920s, and you study the 2020s, they're identical. And as far as the fact, the conditions, the stage has been set for a bunch of people to become millionaires all over again. You feel what I'm saying? And that's that's just a fact. It's just a fact. It's a hundred percent fact. You know, I, I literally this is just what I cashed out today. Because I I wanted I wanted it in my possession <clears throat> because that much got made today. This and a part of this, I like to segregate my money. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? So I'll be on my Willie Lynch shit. I like all my dog shit over here. And I think the last ones over there. You know what I'm saying? It's just the way it goes. It's the way the game goes. I, I only can implore that people take the time out and really push themselves because one or two things is going to happen. You're either going to be dirt fucking poor or you're going to be wealthy. <clears throat> you got to remember this. Only 5% of Americans make over $150,000 a year. 95% of them <clears throat> ain't. Wealth begins, according to the Standard Poor Index, S and P's had over one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, while poverty begins for a family of four at thirty two thousand dollars a year, and for an individual at fifteen thousand dollars a year. So there's over a hundred thousand dollar gray area space, and the reason why they say wealth begins at over one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year is because you should be able to invest one third of your money. That would be fifty grand, at least one third of your money, and if you lost it all. It wouldn't compromise the integrity of you living above par. But that would be if you also are obliged to the 50-30-20 principle where 50% of your money is obligation and 30% can be miscellaneous to keep you sane. So some of the things you spend your money on that you don't necessarily need to, but you do it because that is the benefit of working and being compensated. And then 20, going towards investment, going towards debt that helps you build wealth, not debt that puts you into a conundrum where you like put you in a conundrum. I don't know what to do myself. So mm -hmm. debt, <clears throat> savings, and investments is 20%. 50% obligation, 30% <clears throat> miscellaneous. <clears throat> and because of these times, a lot of miscellaneous can lead into the 20%. So if you're not able to take, another way to approach it, if you're not able to take 50% of what you make to handle all your expenses, and still have another 50% left. So if you're not able to take half of what you make, cover all your expenses, and have 30% to deal with some of the things you technically don't need, but it keeps you sane because why do you want to just keep working and not be able to give back to yourself with some clothes or some nice food or go to movies, pay for the <clears throat> movies at random on TV without feeling the burn or, you know, I'm going to regret this, but fuck it, I'm just tired of saving. You're supposed to be able to do that. Or <clears throat> you go for the long game and say, I should be able to invest one third of everything I get and not compromise my life. And either one of those events, if you can't do it, that means your income to expense ratio 
It's disproportionate. You're paying too much for your obligations, right? Which means your obligations are one of two things. Your obligations is a farce, meaning they're not that obligatory, or two, you're just not making enough and you need to have an additional income. Right, but you you should never be in a space if you can't break up half your money towards obligation and have another half left and divvy it up thirty to twenty between miscellaneous and debt investments and savings. So this is just real math. It's been proven. If you can do this, you have a more than a puncher's chance. So we look at America. Let's say America's this whole book. How hard is it to be a millionaire? Because, you know, you tell a nigga, I'm going around saying I'm a millionaire, <clears throat> you know, because if I'm in a nice car, it's rented. Black people go out their way to do this. I never had a white person go out their way. That's rented. Uh, if I'm in a nice house, the, the house is rented. <clears throat> and if I have a bunch of money, I guess the money's rented, right? But uh, Or they might say I stole it or something. And then what's still in the world. So... We do this and we think about it. We say, if this is the whole America and only this percentage, the 5% have this a fight and chance because you actually have enough money to invest, to amass wealth. That's what that means. Wealthy means you have the ability to invest and get returns <clears throat> to double or triple your net worth. The opportunity is here. And these are the small groups of people that have the opportunity. The rest of the country is this whole thing. Mm -hmm. The question becomes, is it hard to become wealthy? Well, that's a matter of do you see the cup half filled or half empty? Do you see it half full or do you see it half empty? So right here, this is the half full, half empty thing. Because in one instance, damn, everybody is struggling. Shit must be hard because everyone's struggling. Or I sneeze. Or I call. <clears throat> and I wind up right here. Wealthy. Just by call. So some of these people in our community, they coughed or they sneezed and they ended up here. They'll be back here though. Because they use no real math. So, you know, white man gave him some money, disrespect your women, you know, encourage the murder of each other, fratricide, genocide, all those all those sidle thoughts. Boom. Mm -hmm. Do our bidding, we'll let you eat, and then we'll take you back over there. <clears throat> okay? So that's how that goes. So it's not hard, though, because if you use logic, if only this small group of people are here, this means most people got a monopoly on what doesn't work. And these people here, by default, don't have a monopoly on what works. There just must be some kind of disconnect, and that disconnect is the information. So what I spoke to you about <clears throat> You go from pre-K to 12th grade, which is 14 years of school. And in those 14, how to fill out a homeowner's application, first-time homeowner's application. You didn't learn about trans-unit sparing Equifax, FICO scores. You didn't learn about check systems. You didn't learn about LexisNexis or 609 letters. You learned nothing about it. You didn't learn about mortgages or mortgage hypothecation, security agreements, purchase agreements, earnest money, deposits, EMDs. You didn't learn about none of that. You didn't learn about... Uh, Affidavits, specific negative apartments, opportunity to kill and counterclaim kind of claim admiralty. You didn't learn about none of these things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you graduate after 14 years of school, and the only thing you can see them doing, because you don't know what the hell to do other than get a job. Let me go to school, but that shit costs money. Well, they willing to give me some money to go to school, so let me do that. And I mean, the shit is hell from that point forward, because really, they're supposed to prepare you to be an adult. In fact, you didn't even know how to sew a crochet. Why is that important? Because, in essence, if all you learn how to do is make a pizza, and you learn how to make a pizza with pus, because milk is allowed to have 750,000 somatic cells and 24,000 live bacteria before the Food and Drug Administration takes it off the shelf. So they give you eggs, milk, and cheese, say make some bread, don't even tell you if that shit got gluten or not, and how that may impact. No science. So in school, you're supposed to learn Food, clothing, and shelter. And you leave after 14 years and know nothing about how to make your own food, clothing, or shelter. Right. But you're supposed to be a functional adult in society. So when I tell you about the 5% here, the answer is easy. 
All we got to do is find out what is it that they don't teach this populace of people that these people know. What is it that they're doing? These people that have wealth, because how could we have 327 million people estimated that make up this populace? And only 5% of them, only a few millions out of 327 million people are actually are making at least over $150,000 a year. That shit is tricky. And then if you want to turn it into a demographical sketch and say, well, black people make up 12% of the 327 million people estimated that make up this populace. What percentage of the 12% of them is inside of that 5%? What percent of our 12% is inside that 5%? This mm -hmm. shit starts getting spooky. But even in that, the curse is the gift. The people say health is wealth. I say wealth is health. So the curse, people say the gift is curse. No, the curse is the gift. The fact that so much people don't know <clears throat> means you don't have people in your way when you start doing what you didn't know. Once you learn what you're supposed to know, no one's in your way. It's not like a long line of motherfuckers about to be millionaires. There's not. It's a very short line. It's a long line of niggas waiting for food stamps, a long line of niggas waiting for Section 8, long line of niggas out there selling drugs. Let me see if I can sell some pussy. Everybody's doing all sorts of crazy. There's long lines for all that shit. But there ain't no long line for, hey, you know, if I got $500 and I can do a quick 20 cents come up, I can make $100 with that $500. How many times can I do this until I get to $5,000? And then my $5,000 makes me $1,000. How many times can I do that until I get to $10,000 and the $10,000 makes me $2,000? This shit is not rocket science. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just be right. consistent. You got a cell phone. You got internet. The opportunity is yours. You just learn a few things, tricks of the trade, and you're good. So my thing is this. Sometimes, I'm going to tell you this, most times, most times information is, is a very weird thing because if I make it simple, I'm attempting to trick you because why didn't everybody know it? Right? Because everyone went to school, nigga. How come you're the one that know about all this stuff? We all went to school. We don't know it. Yeah, I dropped out 10th grade. It, it, so it helped me get access to different information. I don't encourage people to drop out of school. I just say go to school to be a resource to your community or go to school for something significant. Don't go for business administration. You can administer a business outside of plenty of YouTube tutorials out there. Mm -hmm. Go there for some real shit <laughs> or go there to pick up the real tool, the educational tools or resources you need to make you more refined in your craft. If they have the information available onto you to do that, you do that. But don't go there for those seven years after you done did 14 years and the only thing you got is a Kinko job, printing paper, and then now they ask want you to work once a week upon the so-called opening of this coronavirus that's disrespectful. And so we got to understand the metaphysics of money. And this is why one of the best things that ever happened to us is coronavirus. When a woman breastfeeds, she produces colostrum fluid, right? <clears throat> and it raises the child IQ, digestion, and social ability. But that's not it. I'm going to tell you what's so dope. I'm going to tell you what's so dope. When she breastfeeds, a hormone, hormones are instructions, a hormone called oxytocin, which is the bonding hormone, is secreted from a mammary gland. And the instruction, because hormones are instructions, the instruction is, to bond or connect with whatever is responsible for that experience. Whoever or whatever is responsible for that experience, connect with it and want it again. Protect it if you have to. Engage, because it feels so good. <clears throat> Oxytocin is also produced when we take crack, when we take cocaine. <clears throat> when you see $20 on the floor, and you're like, yo, <clears throat> I hope nobody don't see this shit. Because I'm going to step on it. And I'm going to drag my foot. But I don't want to get caught out there. If they can catch me stepping on it, and then it's just embarrassing. But then you get away with it, and you pull up the $20, and you go, oh, shit, I got it. <clears throat> Oxytocin. I just came up. Oxytocin is also produced when you get a return on your investment. Oxytocin is also produced when 
You see somebody need money, you don't necessarily want to give them the money, but then you give them the money because you're like, you know what, they need the money, I give them the money. And you give them the money, and then guess what happened? You was thinking not to do it, you was reluctant, but the next thing you know, you said to yourself, yo, I'm actually happy I gave them that. You get this feeling. You kind of want to do it again, over and over and over again. This is just a great vibe. Same I'm sorry thing. to cut you off, but the comments, there is there a way to turn off the comments? Oh, no, you good. Don't know to look at it. It's I'm part trying of the not to, but they need to... <laughs> You good. Don't do it. Don't give them that. Don't give them that. Don't give them that. Because they're going to come for you hard as you keep coming up. This is good training right now. So with the oxytocin, <clears throat> this is great training. Because this is part of the game. This is a dirty part of the game. That's the part no one tell you about. That's the disconnect part that we're talking about. So with the oxytocin, it's like you feel good when you gave somebody something. You wasn't going to give them, but then you realize when you gave it to them, damn, thank you. Thank goodness I actually went through and followed through with it, even though I didn't want to do it. I was reluctant, but now I see the impact it's had on somebody's life. Oxytocin is also produced when that happens. So now, here's the game changer. If you worked the job and you actually was properly compensated for the job that you did, oxytocin is produced. This is the same thing that's produced when you take crack and cocaine. Why is this important? It's the same thing that's produced when a woman breastfeeds and she becomes more protective of a child. Is that nature put it in such a way that if she breastfeeds, she's going to be more uh, protecting and, and, and want to secure the safety of her child. So when you work hard, you get a high if you compensate it properly. Just like when you find money on the floor, just like when you give somebody that really needs and you see the impact it has had on them, you get a natural high. You don't need to get a synthetic high by taking drugs. But this is how they kill us every day. We work countless hours, we get a check, and we realize that check doesn't equate to the work we put out. And in turn, you don't get the high that you deserve. Mm -hmm. you, in fact, it kills your high. You don't get the pleasure from what you do. So now it's just mere obligation because there's, it's, not, it's actually not even a reward. It's an insult what you get paid. And so they cheat you out of getting a high because of food inflation. The food is lesser and costs more. Okay? They print more money. They make sense. That's hyperinflation. So everything is working against you. And then now you work a job. It's like, what am I supposed to do with this? $1,200? Bitch, I got rent and everything else to paying people living in this house. What is this stimulus check? So you lose your high off of life. You lose the opportunity to get out of life. And then you start beseeching synthetic forms of the same, synthetic forms of that high. You start looking for drugs to escape because the high that you can naturally get out of life by doing good, by donating, by helping other people, by working hard and being properly compensated, all the venues for you to actually get high are gone. And so... I'm the real stimulus package. That's what I say. I say, yo, I'm here to just teach the people <clears throat> the things that they can do to get back their natural high for life. Mm -hmm. And you can do it from the motivation of studying <clears throat> and just like with yourself. I say, this is a sister with a positive energy, <clears throat> love and spirit. She, she's in a field that we, we desperately need more people in, especially of our community. And I'm like, I'm going to support you in any way that I can, you know? And so as a word of advice also to you, because my phone is dying. So as a word of advice also to you, and then I just realized I actually have, a, <laughs> I have to be in a conversation after this. As a word of advice to you, people say, yo, how come these people say this bad about you, that bad about you, that bad about you? I'm like, yo, you don't live in my world. But that's a lot of people, polite. Right? Like, you don't live in my world. Because you don't have videos doing 20 million views. So if I, if I went somewhere and I taught 100 people, it's likely maybe 10 people don't like what I said, <clears throat> right? And then if I went and I taught, and I got 100,000 people at my disposal, right? It's likely that maybe 10,000 people don't fuck with me. But I mean, 90,000 do. Right. And then if I taught and a million people, I actually got a million people's attention then I've earned the right to have 100,000 people not fuck with me. So now, how many of us is ever going to live in this world that have 100,000 people not like us? But if I had a million people on views, I've earned the right of 100,000 people not to like me. 
And, and in that 100,000, some of them are overzealous. So what if I do a video that has 10 million views because I'm no stranger to 30 million. So yeah. I do a video with 10 million views. <laughs> so I've earned the right for 1 million people not to like me. So do I undermine the 9 million that, that rock with me? No. For, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? So right. or the 900,000 or the 100,000. So when, it's a numbers game at the end of the day. It's a numbers game. So I'll, I'll take the 100,000 that want the worst for me because they're sick because that 100,000 doesn't amount to the 900,000 that rock with me. It's something about negative people. <clears throat> Positive people have a tendency they don't write that much. They just watch it. They love it. They take their notes and they live their life by it. They might DM you one day and say, yo, sister, you, you really changed my life. Right. The negative people, they need everyone to see what they're writing because they need something that makes them feel better than people that they see are doing the right thing and on their path and that are positive. You are clearly positive. So if someone says something, these are people that are struggling with their own situation. I'm telling you, they're struggling. So you can't be there and give them that. Don't ever give them that. Smile the whole damn way. I see a little slick stuff there, but guess what? At the end of the day, when I'm, when I'm done with this conversation with you, you will have taken from this experience and you will move forward because I'm going to see to it. I'm going I'm to be on you. Like, yo, sis, are you still doing what you say you want to do? You need support? I'm going to do that for you. That's a fact. That's how I am. Anyone around me knows that. But these people, they're so busy pushing people away. No one's going to come and be their support system. You, you feel what I'm saying? So we got to count our blessings. We got to be blessed. At the end of the day, when I'm done, that negativity don't pay my bills. The creativity did. Mm -hmm. That's what pays the bills. That's, that's what makes me be a master of my own destiny. That's what makes me be an industrialist versus an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs can run and manage business. Industrialists are owners of the business. They're always pushing an entrepreneur on us, but they never tell us about an industrialist. You know what I'm saying? So I'm an right. industrialist. I'm the publisher of my books. And I'm the publisher of other people's books. I, my, my company produces these books. My logos is on these books. I wrote them. I published them. So that means the black people that help make these books, I help employ my people to make these books. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm an industrialist. Not not just a mere entrepreneur. I've graduated a long time ago. You have taken the time out to become a master of your own destiny by saying, I'm going to pursue this person here, and I'm going to just start this thing here, and I'm going to see if they connect. And then it worked. So you're already on your path. Your stuff is already working. Because with all the damn DMs and everything that I get, that I'm flooded with, it's just at random. Okay, bet. okay, I got you. That's all you want. I, I could do that. Let's do that. And then we're going to go on your page and we're going to really turn it up. And you did an amazing job asking questions, you know, <clears throat> and for the people that's out there, I, I told her prior, I don't want to know what she's asking me. And I don't want her to uh, get too much into the thick of the things that she wants to ask because I want to do that on her channel. So I said, I'm, I'm going to take off a lot on, on this one because I want to save what she has to really bring to the table over there. Because I want to give her that content so she can do what she got to do and really showcase her talent to her following audience. And I'm going to ask you guys, I, I left her name there. Normally the site is there, but out of support and respect. Uh, I want you to go and follow her right now. Please keep it in mind. Kaylin, right? How you say it again? Just make sure. Kaylin? Kaylin, yeah, you said it right. All right, cool. I want to make sure. So go follow Kaylin. All right, K X A I L Y N. Go follow Kaylin. Support her because you know what? A lot of us would be like, if she if she was some of the other sisters I have here that I show love to and I interview, y'all be like, oh, I couldn't concentrate. Her boobies was all in the screen. I couldn't hear none of the knowledge you was kicking because I was distracted because her butt was jiggling. You see, you say shit like that because you're so fucking stupid. If a woman has cleavage, it's against the law. You know, but sometimes some women are just built like that and you chastise them, but what the hell you want her to wear? And if right. you're too stupid where you can't understand what someone is saying just because of the, their, their shape or you can't hear what I'm saying because somebody, then that's the reason why you're failing because you're too distracted and you like discipline. But in this instance now, this sister would be who y'all would probably call very conservative, still obviously beautiful, 
and you're still complaining. Like, something's fucking wrong with people. That's what I'm telling you, sis. It's the people. It ain't, it ain't you. It's them. It's never you. It's them. If, I don't know where they can find any negativity from. So if they did, these are people. They, you know, I ain't, I ain't with the crazy version of God that they give us. But I damn sure believe in the devil because I see it every time on the internet. <laughs> the devil's fucking real. You know what right. I'm saying? <laughs> you ain't did a damn thing that's negative. These niggas is crazy. You know what I'm saying? They be your own people doing that shit too. So you did great. You got my support. I'm asking everybody that's here. This is obviously going to do like 10,000 views, bare minimum, <clears throat> when we're done. So follow and support. We got to do that. Go ahead, sister. But I appreciate it, even just getting on live with me and supporting me. I know you didn't have to. I know you get a lot of DMs, but I appreciate the support. Man, you got it every day of the week. You got it every day of the week. And what I'm going to do, I'm going I'm to get you some interviews with some of my rapper friends when you start building up the momentum, you know, and and that's just... You know, just take what take what it is, your gift, and 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 keep working it, make it more refined, and don't let up. Don't let up. This is great. <clears throat> take take that. Take the criticisms. Yo, I love the criticisms. You know why? Because people be attempting to give me criticism to to tear me down, but I love it because <clears throat> I listen for the truth in the criticism, and I say, you know what? You know, a compliment can be even more destructive than a criticism. So. I take the criticism and I go, where's the truth in there? Because some people want to exploit you because of your weaknesses. So I take a lot of time out to consider what people are saying. And I take heed to it. Because I know the last thing they really want me to do is to fix it. They actually don't want you to fix the thing that they're attempting to exploit. So if I find truth in it, I'm like, you know what? My get back to them is I take your advice. Now, I may not like the way you gave it to me. But I'm gonna still take it, and I'm gonna I'm change certain things if I realize it can suit my needs and my ultimate agenda. Right. Because <clears throat> you know, oh, don't show the money is that there. But when I see a certain type of people don't like it, then that's my get back. Because what you're not gonna do is control how I'm gonna move and what I do. You're not control my happiness and how I'm gonna approach the world. You're not about to do that to me. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this my way. Because when I leave planet Earth. I'm going to leave with a testament that I enjoyed myself. And I would like to be grateful for the adversity that was presented to me because it helped me realize my potential. So I don't want to leave here and be like, yo, God, you know, niggas is trolling me on the internet and then, you know, I have baby mama drama. I don't want to be bitchy. You know what I'm saying? I want to be there. Like, yo, you know what? You threw some shit at me. But I leveled up and I started cooking because once I started realizing how to weave and, you know, you got my reflexes right. Nobody don't swing at you. You can't work on your reflexes. You got to get up in there. I don't want to have, uh, yo, the white man was bringing me down. I couldn't feed my children. I was being oppressed. He was always racially profiling me. When I leave planet Earth, I want to be like, yo, it was a hell of a ride. Yeah, it, I had some stumble blocks. I had some blockades. I had some pitfalls. You know, people was working against me. People lied on me. They slandered me. They backbite. They was hating, but guess what? I transcended all of that, and I still made something of myself. That's that's a better testament. I ain't asking to be here, like on the other stuff. So you know what? My my pops left me at age eight on my birthday, and my mom died the week I met her. When I turned seventeen, I only had seven days with my mother. When I think about it, based on where I'm at today, I don't regret it, and and I don't wish for a different alternative. Because I might have been a bitch-ass nigga if I had both parents. I might have been a nigga don't give a fuck about my people and go to school, have my little bow tie, and <laughs> I'd be it. I would even be a shadow of myself. I might I might have just really not been that zealous towards what I do as far as uplifting people, motivational speaking, dealing with holistic health, dealing with mathematics, dealing with politics, economics in general. I, I almost am afraid of a, a life where I didn't have to endure that type of pain. It was painful, so painful I don't wish it for my child. But the thing that scares me when it comes to my children is if they're lacking the adversity. Because when you work hard, it, it builds character. So I be having to create simulations of adversity for my child because I don't want her to go through what I went through. But the reality is the shit I went through got me to this level. 
So I'm in a conundrum where I'm like, damn, should I make my daughter go to school in the hood? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, how do I assimilate it? Because it's like, I don't ever want her to experience what I experienced. But I don't want her to become weak because of too much opportunity put before her. Mm -hmm. And I'm still figuring that out every day. Like, what can I do with you? Because I, I just can't have you there. And I don't trust the way people raise their children having around my child. Right. But it's like I, I can't be spoiling you to the point you just out of touch and you don't got that grip. So that's why I be having her boxing and going to play basketball and, yo, get rough or push on the floor. Like, I got to do something. I got to create something because she's just not going to be in scenarios. Like, when I got shot, stabbed, and stuff, I would hope not, you know? <clears throat> she's not going to be in scenarios where she don't got her mother and her father around and she's got to be on these streets trying to figure it out. I would mm -hmm. pray not, you know what I'm saying? So those are the real things we think about. <clears throat> not not weird people out here because they hurting. You know what I'm saying? They hurting. They they are the mental form of cancer and the mental form of diabetes. And when people have diabetes, you don't be like, yo, I got a bitch smack this nigga. He got diabetes. No, you, you tend to care about that person and want to help them and come to their aid. So same thing with mental health issues. If you acknowledge it as a real disease, a mental disease, then you don't even be afflicted by it. You just realize, yo, I got to help this person out, you know, mm -hmm. or this shit might be contagious. Uh, if I interact with them too much, I start leaving a little toxic poison myself. So you, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So we deal with it when we deal with it. You good. I'm proud of you. I'm super proud of you. Thank you. S super proud of you, you know. And watch it back. Think about it. Think about maybe your body language. Think about, you know what? I don't even want to connect with these people on a certain level unless I'm going to use it as a teaching moment. So sometimes I might talk about something someone says, but it's, it's specifically to suit my needs, not theirs. Their need is to antagonize you. You can't mm -hmm. give them. But if you create a moment out of it that people can grow from or they can see your character more, then you utilize that. And I believe you did great. You know, and, and I want you to be prepared because nobody likes a person that knows more about where they're going than the person who's lost themselves. Nobody likes that person. The The person that's lost hates a person that's on the path. Mm -hmm. The only thing they could do is take you off your path so they, hey, now we both here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Like you say, misery loves company. You, you actually got your head on your shoulders, you're doing something positive, you're into something highly intellectual. A lot of people don't read, let alone write. You know, you have a great deal of self-respect. You got a lot of great things working for you that a lot of people have lost sense and touch of. You know, a lot of people learn from you. Right. Well, thank you. You got it, sis. You're great. You're great. You need me, you holler at me. Let me know when you're ready for me to get over there so I can put up a fly in, promote, and let everybody know. Get over there. Everybody, make sure you follow. Kaylin is spelled with an X right there. K X. A I L Y N. You know, support the sister and make sure when she when she pulls up and does an interview, you guys are over there and you give support because that's that's what this is about. You gotta do that for each other. No one should have to pay to get support. You know, we always why black people doing this? Why black people doing that? How come these people doing this? How come you always crying? And then when someone's doing something right, we allow people to attack them. That's why yeah. people don't want to do shit right. Because somebody's always fucking bothering people that's doing their best. You know what I'm saying? Bothering people that just got on the path. We got to start protecting those people. <clears throat> Otherwise, stop crying. You know what I'm saying? About why black people doing stuff. They doing that shit because when they doing something positive, we attack them or we allow people to attack them. Show support. Get over there. Follow her. Show support. Give, give encouragement. Give advice. Share strategy. If you got a talent, yeah, I'm available to you. Do that. Give that support. That's what we got to do. That's that's what makes us, that's the difference between real people and fake people. Mm -hmm. You know, real people just do it on the strength just because it's in their spirit. You know, and I know you, you, you people out there, I know, oh, he, he trying to get a fifth wife or sixth wife. I ain't never had to try to get a wife. I be super supportive. I ain't never make a pass at this sister once. That's just me. I'm positive. She never made a pass at me. It's, it's yo, sometimes opposite sex got to show support for each other. And it could just happen like that. And they just move on and do what they do. I, I just genuinely just give support because I'm in love with positivity. Especially she's in a field that's close to the things that I deal with, like reading and writing and everything. 
So why would it not show support? You know, somebody got to give you an opportunity to get in, get in the same game. You know, you can't always just say, I'm going to just do it myself. There is no independency in this world. You got to be dependent on somebody at some point or the other. Somebody got to give you support at some point or the other. There's mm -hmm. no doing it by yourself. Someone always has to give you support. You know, and then people that be in good positions to help you, a lot of times it's like the end of the world that they just took a little time out to help you. So I know how that is because I went through it so much times. That's why sometimes I just get on. Yo, so this person is doing this, that, and the third. This person is dealing with their health. I just do it on a strength when I got time because I know it can, it can light that fire. And that little bit of support can take someone the long, the long way. It can take them the distance. So y'all got to go to Kaylin. Again, go to Kaylin. Make sure. Thank you, fam. There we go. There go the positive stuff. That's what I'm talking about. It's all positive. You're going to always have way more people that's positive. It's just these hating ass people. They will cut and paste and make sure every time someone writes something positive, they put their negative thing right after it. Right. It's crazy. But there's always more people showing you support. <clears throat> there's always more people showing you love. Never think this. Don't even make one person seem like 20 people. Because the mm -hmm. time we take, when I, when I started coming into this, sometimes I get so focused on two or three negative comments that I bypass all the positive ones that were sent because they got my mind. They got, they got me looking at that crap because I'm like, right. why, why are you doing that? <laughs> you know what I'm right. saying? Why are you disrespecting my children? What they got to do with this? Damn, I know I disagree with people, sometimes even vehemently, but don't wish me death. Goodness gracious. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> yeah. It'd be wild. But uh, make sure you call me, hit me up, and let me know uh, when you need me, and I got you. You heard? All right, I will. Thanks again. Peace to you, sister. Thank you so much for the time and the opportunity you gave me. Thank you. Follow up. I'm glad you just did. Peace. That's a good sister, man. Lovely sister. Positive. Positive sister, man. She's an amazing journalist. Inspiring to be greater. Make her greater. Give her opportunities, people. <laughs> Me now, I got to get it in. I got to move forward. I am super late again. Oh, my goodness. I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be on the phone right now. Shit. <laughs> you got it. That's a good sister, man. I support her. She's super positive. You can just see it all over her face. She's just like positive sister, man. It just make you want to support her. People just got to get their brain right, man. Stop being so negative. I hate to see that type of negativity. Hate it. But make sure you follow, too. When I get on the page and I do the interview, make sure you follow. This is it. Pennies off millionaires. Come on. <clears throat> Go to IamBrotherPolite.app. Get that course. <laughs> don't be playing games. Get that course. We ain't playing around. We're going to make that bread. I don't care what they say about me, I'm having a good time on planet Earth. I'm blessed. And, and, and being in this world, oh, thank you for the order. He said, I ordered. <clears throat> thank you, brother. Thank you, sister. Appreciate it. Got my copy. Still waiting on yours. I hear that. You're going to have it before class uh, next Sunday, so you're going to be good money. We back. So happy, man. So happy to be back in the game. So happy to be back in the game. Love it. It's life. Life. Paper terrorism. Love it, man. I feel so good. Hard work. I was in the zone. This is book number 80. Sad. <clears throat> this is book number 64. Tone. We call them tomes. Be back at it. This is tome number 56. You know, oh, he had to plagiarize because you don't believe we could be great. You think I got to copy and steal somebody else's stuff. How much original ideas have you heard me share with you throughout the years? You know how my mind is why You see how I could just answer a question you think I can't put out no books? Are you, are you crazy? Tome number 76. Tome number 82. You're looking at a man. <clears throat> Tome number 54. You're looking at a man who dropped out of school. He's of the race that they 
they stripped our tongues out of our mouths to make sure we would never speak our own language. And then I wrote more books than their own children have written in their own language that they imposed on us. And you want to take me down. I can't be taken down. My mindset is just, I'm just different with this. I just feel different about it. I've written over 90 plus books. <clears throat> and we as a people have the right to say, yo, this is a 10th grade dropout. They wrote over 90 plus books, which you know, first thing Negroes do. Play, those plays where I can't nobody write that much books. You actually can. It's plenty of time to actually do it. If, if that's your interest. I'm, I love reading and writing. The same way people could play video games for hours on end during the day. The same way I could write for hours on end during the day. The same way I could do these streams. What if I just did these streams and transcribed a lot of the informational parts? And then I got references to cooperate what I'm saying. You think I can't come out with a book, especially if, if, I'm, if I learned how to organize a team of people that can take my dictation, <clears throat> help do with some deal with research based on my standards, and employ the scholarly method. I've traveled all over the world. You think I can't publish my findings? And, and, and create narratives after them. It's really not that difficult, people. Tone number 78. We got our own language. I wrote out, I wrote a language for us. We got our own flag. Y'all better get ready to join this community. I'm not playing. Light means pride, optimism, love, integrity, honesty, and trust. However, as a, in our new covenant community, as far as that's concerned, I'm the head of the crown of luster, supreme grand and perception of our new covenant community. Get up out of here. Phone dying. Peace to the family. I love you guys so much. Go to IamBrotherPolite.app and make sure you follow the sister. Show her love. I want her to just see that love, man. I want her to